Podcasters Roundtable round 124. You make podcasts? So what? What else you got? That's, that's what we're going to talk about. I want to know, if you're here, if you're watching this, pretty good chance you don't even, you have a podcast, you probably have like tons of episodes. But I'm curious with that sort of lead in, we're going to talk about should you be blogging or creating other content around that podcast in order to grow that show, get more exposure, whatever you want to do um, with your show. Usually it's people always want to, how do I grow my show? So we'll talk about creating other types of content around the content you're already making because we all have so much extra time, right? And uh, we'll get into a few stories. And uh, oh, look at this. This is really cool. It, for people on the this is for Jamie. This is a button. It's a pin <laughs> I just got. So the audio only, folks, it is a, it's a pin, a button you wear like on a jacket or something, preferably jean jacket, I think. Yes. Uh, and it says podcast, but it's in the shape of the Metallica logo with Cliff Burton's face on it. So it's like the best thing I own in like the last decade. So Jamie being a drummer, I thought he might appreciate that. But yeah, that's that's fantastic. I wish that's there was great. an affiliate link because everyone's going to be like, where can I get that pin, bro? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guitars. We got a lot of music here. I don't know, Jen, uh, Jessica, I don't know what she plays. But speaking of all these names on the round table, who are these people? With piano. Piano. We have a band, people. I have a bass guitar that I can't play. And right I there. sing also. Yeah. Dude, we're set. All right, let's do this. We're Next set. round table is going to be I'll live I'll be your performance. Stevie Nicks. That's, well, then it's going to get pretty weird between us, but it'll be cool. <laughs> And Whatever. between us, meaning you, me, Dave, it's going to get, you know, triangly. All right. Yeah. I have that to look forward to then, I guess. Okay. He is a Hall of Famer. Dave. <laughs> he is. In what, I don't know, but it's it's some Hall of Fame somewhere. Right. Uh, all right. Dave Jackson, welcome back, co-host. Yes. Dave Jackson, schoolofpodcasting.com, ready for another fun-filled evening with Ray and the gang. Rain, that's our name. That's actually yeah. our band name, Rain the Gang. <laughs> it's probably copyright in there somewhere, but good enough. All right, first time roundtabler, Jamie, welcome. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Jamie Eads from The Drum Shuffle. Uh, you can find us at thedrumshuffle.com. We interview professional drummers uh, every single week, so pretty cool stuff. Last time I had a drummer on the show, I made him open the show with the drums. It was definitely the best open we've ever had. So <laughs> if you come back, be prepared. All right. Yeah, I'll get the I'll get the kit right behind me back here. There you go. Oh, is it behind you? Do you have the electronic drums or? No, um, a... I, I I will set up the kit behind me next time. So it, it, we've got space. So we'll we'll do that next time. Amazing. See, good reason to come back. All right. I think another new roundtabler, right? Jessica, welcome. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm Jessica Kupferman. I um, am the co-founder of Shoot Podcasts. I also am the head of marketing for Rebel Base Media, which covers Podcast Success Academy, podcast websites, um, the new podcast design studio, Productivity, and Captivate, which is going to come be launched at the end of the month. Um, I also have three shows. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm like the worst podcaster ever. But I have three shows, um, Shoot Podcasts. I do a comedy show called Brilliant Observations, and I am in currently about to launch Captivate, the Captivate podcast, which is going to be about audio influence. We are also getting your headset mic, so you don't have to lean in. We'll take it. I, mean, you don't, I don't think you have to lean in because we're, we're not getting the, uh, the beautiful ATR. Which sounds ATR. better. Yeah. Uh, do you have a choice? If you have a choice, we'll get that ATR. Well, not, it would be this one. It's not. Yeah, so if you go up to the little gear I don't thing. Think that's, I don't think that's it. It's okay. If you figure it out while we're going, doesn't matter. We can hear you. All right. So. I'll, I'll piddle. You're Thank good. you. You're good. Uh, all right. Cool. Um, we probably should have told Jessica she gets one plug. Oh, but that's at the end. We don't, <laughs> they don't make those rules. I'm anymore. done with mine. I was just trying to introduce uh, myself. It's no, cool. I know. I'll never say it again. You also, um, you're also playing the role of Daniel J. Lewis tonight. So you're in the co-host fill-in. not show. sure how I feel about that. But. <laughs> Okay. It's okay. You get to be your own person. We won't make you be Daniel. All right. Daniel's not with us today, but he'll be with us in a future roundtable. You can but hear me now, right? I We hear you now. That's yes. an ATR. Is that better? No, that's no. not the ATR. Tap on it. Sure. <gasps> it's okay. No, that's not it. You can tell by the... Keep working. All right. Let's get to work. Working. Okay, let's Maybe. do it. Let's get to work. Uh, let's. I had started off with talking about content and additional content for your podcast. There's an article that says, should you also be blogging? Um, and that's really what I based the title on. But I'm curious, you know, for this show, I would say do nothing 
extra. Um, this show just exists and we take what we can get uh, and it does fine because there's no, the goal literally here is just to connect with other podcasters and have fun. So achieved. No one need to, we don't need to Instagram it or Twitter promos. I'm, I'm bad at all that stuff when it comes to this show. Um, but I definitely create tons of content. In fact, you know, it's funny because I don't feel like I create a lot of content that is specific to any show that I have, but it's all under the podcast helper brand. So it's for me, I, I create a lot of content. It's just all over the place. And I expect it really just sort of, that is sort of for me, that's the brand. I don't say myself is the brand, but the brand is just audio video content all over the place. Like it's on social, it's in podcasts, it's in video, you name it. But Dave, do you, you used to blog for the school of podcasting too, right? You had a blog on there. Do you ever, is it just yeah, gone I, ghost town or it's weird. I had a blog at davidjackson.org, which is still there. Uh, and the only reason it's still there is it ranks well in Google. And it was just something where it was like, Oh, we should, I should play with blogging and started one. And next thing I know it started ranking. So I haven't really, but why not blogging on the school of podcasting? The school of podcasting. I'm actually going to do that. In fact, I've actually contemplated, taking down the other website, putting the posts that are on there on the school of podcasting and doing a ton of 301 redirects uh, because I should, because everybody's the, the only reason I kind of like the way it is there is I have had people say I Googled podcasting and because I have multiple sites and they all seem to rank well, it's like, I can't escape Dave Jackson. He's just everywhere. <laughs> so that's kind of why I leave them up. Uh, but yeah, I, I, and the other thing I've started doing is my school of podcasting show a lot of times has multiple segments and sometimes people don't want to wait till the middle to hear this one segment. So I've been actually taking some of those, boiling them down to a couple minutes and putting them out as a YouTube video. So basically re-recording that content as a YouTube video, just to, so some people want to watch it. They can, some people want to listen, they can do that. And if you want to read it, here it is. And you do, I see you have like automated Twitter, like referring to your archive. Cause I see, all your episodes pop up over time. Yeah, I'm I'm actually looking to slow that down a bit because I didn't realize how much I had it lot. going. I could have told you. It's a <laughs> lot, yeah. So I need to do like one a day, twice a week, something like this. It's just, I'm, I look I'm at curious, my Twitter feed. I'm curious, Jessica probably has a good opinion about this, but I'm wondering, should, is it, I, I feel sometimes like, ooh, new content. Like I almost feel like it should say archive in there, but then I'm like, do we then waste, then people turn it, they, they turn, tune it out as at the same time. I don't know, but Jessica, I am quite sure that blogging along with podcasting is right up your right up your alley. Like that's probably something that you do you create content around the podcast or is it just a podcast you've written about? Oh, we don't hear you. Unmute. Maybe. Nope. We got nope. 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 There you go. That's the APR. Wait. There you go. Not now just talking really? to the, yeah. 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 Oh there God. we go. I don't know how that happened. Okay. I'm so it's sorry. Magic. Um, so yeah, when I very first started my podcast, I did my first one, Lady Business Radio, I did have a blog. And then um eventually my podcast sort of became my blog and it was a really good substitute. Well, for me having to like write, because I was like kind of always pained by the idea of having to write an article. So I did my podcast and then I would do like an intro paragraph when I would email it to my list and then that e intro paragraph kind of got longer and longer and longer. And then, yeah, I was doing like a blog post introducing the show. It just sort of happened that way, though. And I know there's a lot of people that do uh, the blog post and don't. It's only if like there's not really a need. If you have something additional to say and you have an interview show or if you have a specific show that just does like tips about influence, for example, um, but we have other things to say, then we would blog alongside it. But I think for most people, if their if their blog is I, Bill Burr is the only person that comes to mind. If their if their if their podcast is more like a daily journal or some kind of journal, like they don't need to like Dave, like somebody with thirty podcasts, like I don't know if you need to blog. Ah, <laughs> uh, Dave, with thirty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. what more could you have to say? Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I I want to come back to that with uh, show notes versus blogging, but so someone help me remember yeah. that because I will forget. But um, I'll, I'll, Jamie, yeah. Yeah, Jamie, do you, with your podcast, is there any other additional content around that? Well, I mean, the last time that I actually did a blog post, it was on MySpace. So if that, <laughs> <laughs> that was available, you could do it, that. Yeah, it was actually, it was a thing on MySpace there for a while. So <laughs> 
when you know when i started the the drum shuffle um which was you know a year ago uh we're coming up on our 52nd weekly episode so when i started the drum shuffle i i just wanted to get into the podcast i just wanted to start immediately podcasting and growing up in the music circles i know a little bit about the art of promotion but i didn't um, want to take the time to do the blogging as well. So my strategy when we started the podcast was really to have killer content, have the, the best guests that I could get, and then promote the heck out of it. Some people have told me, yeah, you should probably start a blog. Um, but, you know, to your point, Ray, um, I try to make really good show notes um, so that when people see the show notes, they're going to understand kind of what they're getting if they they click the play button, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So I would say, Jess, I don't know you're going to jump in. I was going to ask what's really the difference between a, a blog post and a, and show notes. Like you read my mind. So to me personally, a blog, the blog post is two things. One, your innermost thoughts, which is something you can't necessarily do from show notes unless you're going to take like a paragraph and be like, before I interview this person, I did some research. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Let's find out. Then I interviewed this person. Here's what I learned. In closing, everything is beautiful. That would be more of a blog post type show notes, but I use blog posts for more like here, like for example, one of the topics I had to talk about tonight or I offered to talk about tonight was discoverability and the mainstream media. It's dun, something dun, I, dun, I already <laughs> it's something I already wrote about that actually I'm gonna a, a post is posting tomorrow. I don't have the link for you yet. But um that's a blog post because I don't really have any show where, you know, to say all my thoughts. Um also a blog post is you know, one of those Neil Patel 5,000 word ultimate guide to Facebook ads or ultimate guide to cover art or ultimate guide to using audacity, like blog poster for those two things. I am also not a big show notes person, just so I would either have a blog post or show notes. But I think show, I think show notes are overrated because I feel like it's just lazy SEO. If you know how to do SEO like in your site and you can tag and categorize properly with long tail SEO keywords, you don't need to have a transcript or keyword your show notes as thickly as that's a terrible way of describing it as as much as people do. My show notes are like <clears throat> they're not thick at all. They're very thin. <laughs> like, are they thin? I, I, yeah, I do like thin, thickness, but, yeah. just not for show notes. Yeah, no. No, I mean it's not good. To each his own. It's just I like bullets because I don't want to give away the whole show. Well, what the what is the difference? So we talk about this all the time in sort of these circles about being found in Google, right? And now that Google's doing podcasts, they've got their directory in theory, and they're supposed to they're surfacing surfacing that through search on mobile right now. And we're hoping that's going to come to desktop. You know, is there a chance that I mean, how are they going to rank? How are they going to rank a show? like my mine the podcaster studio versus school of podcasting versus the audacity podcast which are the same show they're all different how's google going to choose which one they should rank higher if they start surfacing on the web if you know if say our show notes are i think what they rank is the most recent update so <sighs> like you guys might be fighting for the top on any given day depending on whose content is the most recent because i know they look for the newest stuff first mm -hmm. i mean don't they? I think they I do. Know. I mean, well, do you think that, even, there's number of backlinks um, is in there as well? I was just playing with the keyword. That's tool. right. Yes, backlinks. Um, is are that you the boy band in the '90s that like the one kid was? You know, <laughs> I want <laughs> it that way. Um, backlinks. Yeah, I saw them. That would be a good podcaster band, actually. Backlinks. <laughs> oh my god, full um, nerd. <laughs> I did go full nerd on you there. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you're right. Backlinks and also cross-linking in your own posts. I mean, there yeah. are, but I just think I always thought the most recent stuff was the thing that came up first, which is why I don't recommend people do seasons and I don't recommend people do every other week a show. If they want to be, if you don't care about being found, then go for it.
What about the future? Do we think that like creating more kite? So Todd Karkin will always talk about how this has been his strategy from day one. Like he creates a ton of content on, I think, Geek News and he has his podcast. And the reason his podcast is successful is because he draws so much web traffic and they get there for, because he does a lot of tech reviews, right? So he has a lot of stuff to do outside of the podcast, but they then find there's a tech podcast. And according to him, they hit the subscribe button on the website. No one does that. But he says that that's that's it. That's like his core strategy that you have to like sort of have these, you know, or more that if you podcast, if you blog and maybe something else, maybe YouTube or something like the more you do in theory, the faster you can grow. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I would think it, it, it makes sense in theory, because like I said, some people like to read, some people like to listen, some people like to watch. So do you I apply a blogging mindset to your show notes, Dave? I do. I, and I got that from, I listened to Pat Flynn in his early days when he was writing a blog post, he was basically writing a blog post so you could pass a test. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go that crazy, but my show notes are pretty crazy now, but mainly what I, I switched this about a year and a half ago. I used to write bullet points, record my show, and then turn around and expand on those bullet points and make that the show notes. And now I do the opposite. I, I flesh out the idea in a blog post or, or just, you know, whatever, a Google Doc somewhere. Then I turn those into bullet points because I don't want to read to my audience. That's boring. Um, so I take the bullet points and then I just talk to one person. Uh, but I, I still keep the, the full show notes just, again, for Google traffic. And then there are, you know, there are deaf people in the world that like to read in some cases. And Oh, good point. You know, yeah, so but they could also listen to the podcast, though. A deaf person could not listen to the podcast, no. <laughs> oh, deaf. Could. Yeah. Why did I think blind? Yeah, but I know what you mean. No, blind You're people love glasses. podcasts. So um, the, the other thing, though, I did an episode. I am on so sorry, that. ladies and gentlemen. That was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hear you. So that's, you know. They're not oh, offended. man. Oh, oh right. they're, they're hey, the words. Yeah. Way, to, way to just take it. Way to take right. Jessica <laughs> off. Right the, off the edge. Yeah, yeah. Well, I but, mean, uh, um, she was feeling bad. No, and I did like, an episode because I. In front of a bullet. Yeah, we do spend a lot of time on our show notes. So I kind of said, hey, is anybody reading these? And I, my audience at least said, which is a bunch of podcasters, said they go to them for the links, the links, and they, they use them to figure out, am I going to listen or not? So you know, is, is a podcast a website strategy? Okay. And what if I, I'm a business that needs to get people to my website? Is a podcast yeah, so a good strategy for that? Here's why. That's you said yes. Interesting question. Yes. That's an interesting question. Because in theory, Maybe and see now I'm, I'm starting. To no, yeah, if, if people click play and listen on your site, that's the first thing. Are they doing that? But if they did, your time on site is going to go up, which is going to make Google go, hey, this must be good content because these people never leave. But they don't listen on our website. I'm going to say that's like, the thing. They don't. But, I mean, but, if you look at your stats, it's like three people out of 30,000, if yeah. that. Right. But I but. Does it get people to the website if they don't click play? But here's the thing. I think Daniel does a great job of his show notes. I think he might have some blog stuff too. But like, and I think people have told him this and even like putting all of the content in your ID3 tags and metadata so it pops up in, a, in, an, in an app. Like, I just want to give it all to the person who wants to consume it. I don't really care how they get it. So for Daniel, I will, I may have heard the episode. I may not, but I might go to a blog post. because I remember he talked about how the heck I changed my feed and feed burner or something. And he's got the instructions. He does a great job of outlining. So yeah. I know a lot of people go to his show and they, they don't listen to the podcast, but they're there. They know he has a podcast. They may subscribe and listen at another time, but his his website draws in people because, you know, it's he kind of outlines everything that's in the podcast right there in the show notes. So I think it does a good job. But for, yeah, I don't know if that's like a blog post because it is sort of outlining your podcast as opposed to saying something that you didn't say. I mean, Jessica works with entrepreneurs, so she's only used to the interview interview format, maybe. Like, you know, we have no, that's not true. I mean, Daniel had some <laughs> Daniel has had some really recent this is kind of my point, actually, is that like during personal strife, he was using his podcast as a way of communicating to people like what was happening rather than write it out. It right. was, I mean, I don't I actually don't know because like most listeners, I don't go to the website, but, um, but he was using that as a form of blogging too. And then I'm sure he got back to the audacity to podcast, but he was also posting on a regular basis. Like, this is what's going on with me. This is how I feel about it. 
um, rather than writing. To me, the if you had written that out, that would have been more of a blog post, I think. Then. Yeah. Jamie, do you think a podcast is a, well, I mean, why did you start a podcast? You just said you just want to get into it, but I'm not sure if, why did you start well, a podcast? It, well, for me, um, As you know, blog. well, for me, you know, as a musician, I'm not scared of being in front of a microphone, obviously. I mean, I've, I've spent 25 years doing that. For me, it was as I was transitioning out of the, you know, bar bands, et cetera, you know, I, I got to a certain age where I'm not, I, I don't want to tour as much as I once did. Um, so for me, it was, I've made all these great connections. What can I talk about? You know, and, and I thought about doing an unsigned band kind of podcast and, and, you know, music licensing being what it is, I decided against that. I thought that would be too much work. But in my particular case, you know, I just wanted people, um, you know, I, I wanted to talk to other drummers, especially because I think drummers, there's not a lot of outlets podcast wise for drummers. There's some great ones out there, but I don't want to talk about technical aspects of music. I wanted to get inside these guys' brains, what makes them tick kind of thing. So I may not be the best person to ask about show notes, et cetera, you know, because I, it's an interview format and I'm basically in my show notes, I'm saying, hey, I talked to Ray today. We talked about how Ray started as a drummer or a podcaster. We talked about, you know, um, the one seminal moment that he knew he was going to make it as a podcaster, et cetera. It's literally just a paragraph. Yeah. Um, I, I I'm of the, if you build it, they will come school, right? Dave, 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 Dave. are they coming, Dave? I am. Wait, no, you're not. not are no, you? you're <laughs> not. It's getting weird. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dave, he said, I think you were watching the chat. Uh, Jamie said, if he, he went with the, if you build it, they will come. Oh, right? yes. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Where's the chat? <laughs> uh, Podcastersroundtable.com slash live. Every other Thursday, you should show up there and chat with us. We're hanging out there right now um check it out uh dave um, but i know dave this is one you've i've heard you say that phrase several times it's it, if, you if build they it, build it they will come uh, yeah they, well, that doesn't work it, it doesn't work no yeah. um you got to go tell people about your show and, and i think jamie he talked about people. yeah uh, marketing endlessly and you know marketing in theory is is a form of content right i mean because i am sure. let's we take we can remove the focus off blogging and i am curious about other content like we could just i could we could record this podcast in theory we're doing video and audio right now so we are do, doubling up on our content creation here but we could record this audio podcast put it in the feed and then just record the next one um and you know what that's probably what happens with this one other than the youtube video that's pretty much all that happens i don't go i don't tweet about it um i don't i don't put it on any social um i don't then write a the show notes are terrible they're literally what i right in the email that's one paragraph to say come check us out and here's the topic so yeah. this this show right here has zero almost zero content around it um you know jamie are you creating so you talked about build it if they come but you also do you it sounds like you do a lot of marketing i wouldn't say a lot i mean for me, you know, I'm a student of my instrument. So when I get somebody like Marco Miniman, the one of the greatest drummers alive to come on the show, obviously I want to tell the social channels about that. You know, I mean, I, I do want to say that. Um, however, I, you know, I think just doing the social media thing isn't enough. I got very lucky early on um, in that and, and Dave, I think will really appreciate this. I had Jerry Gaskell from King's X on my show. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So Jerry comes on my show and I asked the question, I said, you guys haven't had a new record in how many years? And he said, well, that's about to change. So he announced on my show that King's X was getting ready to go into the studio and another website picked that up as a, as a news blast. So I picked up a ton of listeners because one of the music websites found that content somehow. So I guess I just got lucky in that. Um, however, you know, as a musician, I feel like my music is my other content, if that makes any sense. So I may not be the perfect case study. I felt like the podcast 
was an extension of me as a musician. Does that make any sense? I think it does. The podcast was an extent of you as a musician. Yeah, so it's not blogging or doing show notes because the music part is the other content. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like, you know, there's enough of me out there as a musician that the podcast was just kind of the next logical step because, you know, I, I sure as hell, I, I'm not a journalist, <laughs> you know, but, I, you know, I approached my show, the genesis of it from a what would the 13 year old Jamie want to know from all of his favorite drummers? You know, I approached it from from that angle. So. I disagree with you about not being a journalist. I think once you sit behind the microphone and start interviewing someone else, it's your job to get the story that you just described, the story that people listening want to know. Like you are a journalist, whether you think of yourself that way or not. Once you start interviewing somebody that has something interesting to say that might change or inspire or yeah, entertain I, someone else. I was going to well, say it, for yeah, a guy I, that's not a journalist, you broke the story that King's X. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you broke the story. <laughs> Well, like let, me, not. Yeah. let me let me rephrase. I'm not a very good journalist. <laughs> How's that? I'm a, I'm like an untrained, yeah. untrained journalist is is. But, you know, I mean, I just I, I don't know if I'm getting my point across as well as I would like, but I feel like my musical life, my recording, my my touring is the other content for me on top of the podcast or vice versa. I do like the idea of being everywhere. Like I do kind of subscribe to the Pat Flynn school of marketing because you really don't know where and how people are going to want to consume you. It doesn't mean do the same content everywhere, but it doesn't necessarily mean resort to blogging. Like I can have a podcast and do a lot of Instagram stories and post funny stuff on Facebook and none of it is the same, but all of it gives people a, a tiny idea of what I'm like. And then Wherever they are, they get something from me, even if it's not the exact same thing every time. And then if they want to check out the other stuff, you send them there so that everything is sort of like a cycle that sends them elsewhere. You you list the social on the podcast on the, you know, and then they go on the social. Then you mention the podcast on the social. So you're kind of always sending them someplace. I am surprised when I <clears throat> see a podcaster who doesn't have their podcast like in their Twitter, like a link, like. I hear you have a podcast. Yeah. Sometimes it won't even be on their website. Like it is so oh, common. What is it? They have a podcast, but where is it? I, I, I was. I'm People, amazed at how the things that aren't on a website, and then, like you said, things that are on Twitter and face pe on people on Facebook. Oh my God. They're commenting all the time on Facebook, and you're like, "Hey, yeah. I'm going to go listen to their podcast," and you go, "I can't find it," and then you have to type in their name, podcast, and you're like, "Well, yeah, so yes." Well, what about the people who podcast. complain they can't grow? We can't grow. Where's our audience? Well, have you looked at your Twitter feed? You are not posting a link to your show. Yeah. yeah Why? I, mean, I think that's just marketing 101. I think people are so. You know, that's the one thing that I feel like I did get correct in that I knew how to chain all of it together, right? To make sure the podcast is on my personal website, that there's a link to the podcast on my Twitter feed, on Facebook, on Instagram, all of those different things. So, but I think a lot of people just want to jump into their show and they forget about telling people where to consume it. Yeah. I think one of the questions too is what do you consider yourself first? Like I could be a YouTuber with a YouTuber with a podcast and I've got my YouTube link. But at least if I go to YouTube, is it obvious you have a podcast? I mean, this guy I was watching this channel yesterday and he's he mentioned several times in the video, we, you know, the camera that we used on the podcast looks better. I'm like, where's it? And I went in his playlist, not there was no podcast playlist. There was an episode, something, but that was like a QA. I was like, dude, I am trying to consume your stuff. But what do you consider yourself first? I don't know if everyone here even considers himself a podcaster first. There is a limited amount of links you can have. But if you're gonna send them to your like I talked about myself as a brand. So if I put Ray RayOrtega.com, if you go there, you can jump off to any of my properties from there. So hopefully the thing you do have linked. Uh, then leads to at least your podcast. If if you're interested in having people find your podcast, I think the term you're looking for is influencer. Yeah, no, I'm not looking for that term. You're not. <laughs> no, but, I, but look, I know. But but, but the classic 
the classic definition of influencer is right. not the same as the kind of influencer that I'm talking about. Like that is the technical term, even if you're not posing your sorry on a beach in Hawaii, like you're still an influencer <laughs> in that you are a content creator who does have sway with the people who consume your content. Um, it is in various different forms. You are open to having, I don't know if you personally are open to having, but you can be open to having um, collaborations and, you know, advertisements on your content like that. I, I, that's really the only term that sums up all those things. Like you can be a YouTuber and an Instagram, but what are you first? Like really first you're a, you're a content creator, yes. which to me is an influencer. Yeah, right. I like content creator, but it's just because okay. they, yeah. we go now we go in like five year spurts where one word becomes like yucky. Right. So consultant became an ugly word for a while, a while back. And then I think True. influencers, the word of the last couple decades of people now hear and go, Ooh, or like affiliate marketer. Oh, that, that got real dirty. Right. Cause people abused it. Right. So yes. no, I have no problem with influencers they, they, and it's an accurate term. The one that the kids are all, um, uh, you know, that I hear all the, yeah, well, younger than me, Jessica and her friends, thought leader. You know, I mean, you hear that all yes, the time. That's a good thought leader. That's like a it, classic one. I feel like that's it, a that's, that's the guy a, on stage. That if you were term. on stage, it would be thought leader. Yeah, but that one's that one's fallen in, into bad shape nowadays. But you know, for me, I define myself as as drummer or musician. So, you know, everything revolves around that. And quite honestly, you know, in terms of my show, it was, you know, I've been a musician all these years. I've met all these really cool people. But, um, you know, Jerry Gaskell didn't know who I was before I reached out and said, hey, would you come on my show? And he was like, sure, I'd love to. So for me, it's a really good opportunity to network amongst my colleagues, you know, so I mean, I, I think I think it does depend on how you're going to define yourself. You know, it's just a, a fun side effect for me. Yeah, it just I think general advice to round out the topic is if you're going to have a podcast and you want to grow or you want people to find that podcast, I don't know why you're doing it. Otherwise, you do want people to listen to your show. Um, make sure it can be found. Like I don't if you're linking to your YouTube there, I think you can put a custom link in the YouTube band, just wherever you're linking people to. I that's kind of my question of what do you define yourself as? Because I was going to say, raise your hand if your podcast is in your email signature. Is it? Uh, but do you consider do you is that your top priority, right? Like maybe there's something else in your email signature. Maybe there's nothing at all. I mean, it, not that I'm saying that's going to drive traffic, but it just made me think of links and everywhere you put your podcast, like a potential person. Because Jess, you were kind of talking about like be everywhere, right? So like who knows when you send an email, you know, people send me emails and it's, they have a good email. It's like, well, mine is Ray at Ray for that, for some stuff, or it's Ray at the podcaster studio.com, depending on who I'm emailing. And people send me an email with a domain in it. I will check out their domain. Uh, I don't think most people see that, but I definitely, I'm like, oh, they have a website. Like I want to see what's there. Right. But right so. now as the, as the head of marketing, um, it's rebel Beast media. And so I don't have my podcast in there because you heard all the cr stuff I do at the beginning of the show. I mean, who who could read all that signature? It's just too right. much. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sometimes, and that's it. Sometimes you have to make a choice of like, I've got one space. Like you would probably put hype, one hyperlink in a Twitter or something. Like, what do you choose? But hopefully whatever that is will lead people to the path. Um, it, it's terrible when you get, like Dave, you get frustrated when you're trying to find, you're, I'm actually trying to get your content and I can't do it, right? If Obviously you're telling me about it somewhere and somehow I can't get to it. But anyways, we'll wrap up this topic because we've gotten to no other stories. Classic round table. Dave, we, cha <laughs> we I changed the format here a little bit. We used to do topics and, I, and, I, and then I went to news because it was just, we'd done a lot of topics and it was easier to invite different people on. People thought they used to have to have experience in that thing. It's not really what the show's about, but you bring a new story allows any podcaster to easily come on. And I don't have to find like four people who have subject matter expertise in that one topic. But you know what I would say? We're doing a blend because this is, I, I've noticed a trend since we've started doing this, I think somewhere after like episode 100 or something. We spent at least the first top half of the show basically doing a topic. This was a topic. This was an old I actually topic. have an additional question on this topic, but if I you want to wrap it up, we can. This is a whole we could we could keep going on this one, which it's totally fun. I wish in real time, you know what we need like Periscope does the hearts. We need like hearts to float <laughs> up so we can be like, do you want us to keep going or should we get to some news stories? Cuz there's good stuff here. I don't know yeah. what's your question. 
I was going to ask what you answer when people say, so Ray, mm-hmm. you've never met before. What do you do for a living? That, that So we talked about in the last on the last one because we did? talked about we did an article about like, how do you ex- like, what do you tell your parents or your family or something like that? It was something about that. Or just um, if you're somewhere like the grocery, it, or whatever. It totally depends on who I'm talking to. I usually get a vibe of like this person. I don't know how, you know, whatever. Uh, I will say a lot of times I'll say audio video production um, because oh, because everyone knows that. And those are my two things. Um, but I'll sometimes I'll say content creator or I'll say audio video production specializing in podcast. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll say professional podcast producer. It really does depend on who I'm talking to. Dave, um, what do I, you say? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I, I even like I think last time was talking about how I admit there was like a little bit of embarrassment. Like I'd go to an adult party right? Like 10 years ago. And I'd say, yeah, I wouldn't say people go, what do you do? And I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm a whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm a podcast or a podcast producer. People are like, I don't never. Are you just playing in your garage and your wife makes all the money? I was like, no, I actually have a job. <laughs> it's a real thing, people. Yeah, that's why I asked you because I very rarely say podcaster because people, the look yeah. is not a welcome look. It's getting that's better. Why. It's getting yeah, better. It's getting better. Yeah, but, I tell people I'm a digital nomad. And then <laughs> no, you don't. Nice. No. I'm an influencer. I, I didn't want to admit it, but that's what I tell people in my real yeah. life. I'm like, have you Google me? What, you don't know me? <laughs> Google me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Conversation done. All right. Ray, I think you should just start telling everybody that you're Joe Rogan. And Joe not Rogan. <laughs> it's the SM7V. <laughs> oh, I get <laughs> I have to shave my head and start punching people. Isn't that how that works? <laughs> I do watch clips. So, Joe, if you want to be on the show, let's do this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, let's move on. Uh, Jamie, let's get to one of yours. I'm actually, because you mentioned the music thing, and this is, I almost wanted to lead with this because it's so important that the amount of audience we've lost halfway through the show, I'll go check I, uh, Apple later, Podcast Connect. But this is an important one to hear. So podcasters sued for copyright infringement for using music without permission. So I was curious what you have a main takeaway on here. What's this article about and why do we care? Well, I, you know, I, I consume podcasts. Who was sued, by the way? Um, is it a it big was, show? No, it was actually a podcast that dealt with um, oh, uh, online poker, I think. Yeah. And they uh, were using you know, somebody's music. And and honestly, I don't know the specifics, like who the artist was, who the label was. I'm pretty sure it was Universal Music Group. But, you know, when I first started thinking about starting a show, I wanted to do like a, you know, an unsigned band kind of thing. So you don't really have to deal with music licensing if it's an unsigned band for the most part, because most bands want that exposure. However, to do it correctly, you should have a contract with anyone's music uh, that you're using on your show. Um, and and Dave is a good example. He has on his website, um, you know, I've used a King's X song by permission, right? So I get the question all the time. Um, I'll have a drummer on the show to talk about their new record. You know, they want to plug their new album that they've just recorded. And people will email me and say, well, why didn't you play a sample of the song? Well, you know, sometimes the drummer says, feel free to use it if you'd like, but I don't want their label to turn around and sue me three weeks later. They don't necessarily have the rights to their own music. In most cases, they don't. Right. If they're Um, signed, right? So in most cases, they do not own their own publishing. Wait, well, let's forget it. Jamie, I just want to use seven seconds. So I'm good. Right? Okay. No. Uh, no, you are not. <laughs> and what a what a lot of folks will do but is hey, they, I paid for that. I downloaded. It. I paid for. I paid three bucks. I'm using right. it. Yeah. And there's two things. Two big things. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people will actually go to one of the music aggregators. Uh, you know, like Harry Fox Agency, Easy Song Licensing, something like that, and they will pay their twenty nine dollars to license a song but you're only getting performance rights, meaning your band can play it live or, um, you know, you could record it and re-release it, but you cannot use it for distribution. And the argument in this particular case was you can listen to a podcast on a Google speaker, on the Amazon speaker, 
that is new distribution that maybe the artist didn't want. Okay, well, I mean, so, I know the unique nature of podcasts, we, you download files. It's like you're download, actually yeah. downloading music files. Yeah, it's a mechanical rights is what screws the whole thing up because you need permission from the songwriter, the song performer, which in many cases is the same person, and then whoever owns the mechanical rights, which is typically the record label. And yeah, Oh, I forgot though, but I've been doing it for a hundred episodes and I never got caught. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and you may get away with it for forever and ever and ever. You may never get caught. Um, you know, it, it it's kind of like the old Napster thing. It wasn't an issue until it was an issue. Right. And yeah. this was the first case that I've seen where an actual podcaster was sued by a rights holder saying you're infringing on a copyright. So does this open the floodgates? I don't know. Well, um, go ahead, Dave. The thing they did that was stupid is they were warned. They said, hey, quit doing that. Yeah, and they got they, the cease and desist and ignored and, it. And, and ignored it. So there's there's the big good lesson idea. right there. If you get a cease and desist, I think it would be a good idea to cease and desist. But <laughs> yeah. We're, right. only, we're only moments away from Apple Podcasts getting content ID. I, I can't believe it doesn't exist already, right? So you do this on YouTube, you're caught immediately. The bots yeah. catch you, right? But I love the solution that YouTube has come up with because a lot of times either they'll demonetize, so you can't monetize that, and then they'll monetize against your channel. If you're using like a Taylor Swift song, they'll sell it right there as an MP3 or link to her album or something. They've made it so that like if you did if you did use copyright, A, they'll catch you, but B, they'll then give the artist what they deserve as opposed to like just taking down your video. I don't think that works in all cases, but yeah, the fact that this doesn't exist in podcasts yet blows me away because at some point, I mean, maybe it's because we don't upload, right? It's the host. So Dave, right. I'm pretty sure maybe that's maybe that's on you guys. And Jessica, you could work with the host as well. So uh, maybe that's why we haven't seen it, you know, because it doesn't get hosted on Apple. They don't they don't scan it the way you would if you were hosting be. the audio. I mean, I've I'll be at Libsyn three years in February, and I've I, as far as I know, they, we've had at least one takedown because somebody was using an Eminem song. So Rob would know better than I would, but I know he he told me the one time he's like, yeah, we had to because they contact Libsyn, Libsyn then rips it down, and then we contact the podcaster to go, don't do that. <laughs> So, well, yeah. and most of most of the hosting companies, I'm pretty sure, put some language in their agreement yeah. saying if you're using, you know, if you're infringing somebody's copyright, we'll squash you, kind, you know, kind well, of thing. That, so that's it's also worded so that it's your responsibility. You are mm -hmm. saying by hosting here that you're not going to do this, so that way they can. It indemnifies up. the host yeah. essentially. The yeah. new player in the market and the new challenge for podcasters is Spotify and Pandora. Oh. Right. Spotify was freaked out about taking podcasts because of music. And so I guess in the beginning when they rolled out, they had this super limited, right? The only certain shows got picked. I mean, they went to like Lipson and stuff and other hosts and said, give me if some shows and they were highly curated. Now they've opened it up. And I think that they're more um, they're not as worried about it. I don't know. I don't know what the process is there, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't have music in your podcast. I don't know how it works. You're like even like royalty free that you are allowed, like you pay for and you're allowed to distribute. I don't know. I don't know how it works with, I mean, my shows, it's got music that I paid for, but well, I, I, I can speak I from a little bit of experience. My show, I use one of my own songs, you know, you're a band that I played for, in. Are you on Spotify, Jamie? Because yes. your show is actually one of the few that might do good on Spotify. <laughs> it's a music show. Well, well, yeah. And, you know, that's the interesting thing. Of course, Spotify, you know, just last month announced, hey, we're going all in on podcasting. OK, so um, they let me slide because I can prove that I own the copyright to the song that I'm using. Did and I'm using like you about that. You said slide or you just assume or did they actually ask you? No, it, it was asked, you know, do you own the rights to this? And yes, I do. Um, and, and what's cool, and I don't want to get in the rabbit hole, but I post my episodes on YouTube. It's an automatic thing that my host allows. You know, do you want to post this on YouTube? Yes. YouTube sends me an email every week the minute I publish. Like yeah. within two minutes, Content they say, ID. "You yes, content has been ID'd. And of course, you know, I own the copyright to the music that's used. Um, but Spotify's fear of podcasts, 
uh, initially, it has gone away. They see it as a way to feed their 200 million subscribers on the music side. So podcasts about music, you're going to see a, a, <laughs> an explosion of those uh, because Spotify wants to create their own branded shows basically they're they're going to hire hire content creators to come in so you're going to see a lot of new music shows and a lot of genre specific shows um the number one album in the country last week on on the billboard charts sold just over 800 physical copies but it had 86 million streams think that's about that amazing. for just a second that's amazing Spotify has changed the music business and now they have their sights set on podcasting as well. And they will firmly grab the number two spot. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, they will. But the thing, you know, funny about the number two spot, it's uh, that there's jokes there, but I'm gonna go there. Um, it's been like wide open, like that should be that should be Microsoft spot. They just gave it away years ago, right? The whole Zoom thing, they had it. Um, who didn't uh, Stitcher had it for a while. And then, uh, but Spotify came on and quickly became, because no one really feels, Google should hands down be the number two. I mean, they, they kind of are number twoing it right now. Okay, I made the joke, but yes, they, they should be number two. But Spotify, I think, has grabbed it. And then it's going to be a competition between Pandora and Spotify. And that number two is always up. No one gets close to Apple. I mean, like, not even close, um, which is interesting because, you know, there's debates about whether Apple's doing enough to even earn that number one. But they've got it. And then kudos to them for being there first. I think they have something up their sleeve. You think what? I think they have something up their sleeve. You think they have some kind of magic? Like No, I I've... think they're dripping very, you know, one drop at a time into whether or not they want to do this. Like they came out with like the podcast connect, like tips for podcasting, which was like, like so terrible. <laughs> and then, you know, like they're just slow, like this and that to sort of dip their toe into whether or not they want to put more effort into their podcasts. They have such a know, large I've just been noticed like yeah. after all this time there's no movement. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. I mean, you got to innovate, not innovate. But you got to give more yeah. every once in a while, but I it feels like they've been coasting for a long time, but I also feel like yeah. that might not be fair to say cuz I I don't know. I mean, they're they're doing a good job. People say they use the app and they just still can't figure it out but um, hey, how are they doing a good job people hate the app their their um their charts are easily gamed what they're not they're i don't think they're doing such a great job where they, they make it why, impossible why to share. Are people but i mean but I'm, I'm 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 thinking in terms of they don't just lose their market share like it doesn't just go away like we hear it because we are we we talk into a bubble we scream into the damn thing but like most average podcast consumers they use Apple Podcasts, and we don't hear about the problem. So people aren't, they're not dropping the ball in the, in the, in the mass, uh, I guess, audience, for the mass audience. They, for us, they are, but. I think yeah, it's, I, I think it's follow yeah. the money. If you look at, you know, Spotify is going to spend a whole lot of money on podcasting over the next two, three years. Apple doesn't have to spend that money because they already had 90% market share, you know? So I think they're in a way resting on their laurels. But they also so, don't, get my, the, 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 what we've always said about Apple is like, they don't make money from podcasts. So like, we understand that they have three people running the whole show. Like, it's not a revenue. Like we always were kind right. of scared that they would even just kind of let it go because that doesn't make money from, but you know, it brings people to the store. So does it really not make money? We don't, I don't know if we know that. If but. Spotify starts making money, they're going to be very, very angry about it because they didn't think of it first. And I do think Spotify will pull ahead as the number one place people listen to podcasts because it's it's some place where you can have both your music and your everything you listen to all in one spot. You can't really get that anywhere else. I mean, Pandora, well, Apple I Music, but you can't get Apple Podcasts. You can't get podcasts. Bold, you need a totally separate app. Bold prediction. How long is it going to take, Jessica? Um, no one listens to this show, so you can just say two weeks i yeah tomorrow no i mean <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'd like to say let's say you'll start to see this shift by the summer wow i mean yeah it's they have so Spotify's far is really making a lot they're really working hard to be on the podcast they're developing their own they're doing their own ads in there like they're moving pretty fast they're trying to at least but 
you can always go to apple you can always go to apple and not get ads like <laughs> like yeah. the ad thing doesn't necessarily <clears throat> seem an advantage for the listener because they'll be like mm, yeah my favorite show's being supported but at the same time i don't get ads in that same damn show over an apple podcast it's that's not injected why, into my show yeah that's why I that's why i don't listen to stitcher yes exactly bingo i used to li i was a big stitcher fan and then it went from playing an ad in between every episode to playing an ad every time I hit pause. And I that's never, when I went, <laughs> Richard, and we're done. It was garbage, but, yeah. but, well, but they threw ads. So I would always tell people, here's the thing. People freaked out about that. Like they'd say, I don't want to be on Stitcher because they put ads in my content, blah, blah, blah. And I said, look, the people who are listening to your show on Stitcher don't care or they, they would listen to it somewhere else. Like don't let your content not be heard. Like it bothers you. It does not bother your listener. All right. But if people are concerned, you say, Hey, go over to po Apple podcasts. I have no ads there. You do have to be careful though. Cause this is why blog talk radio doesn't exist anymore. Oh, also because their audio was terrible. I guess. Yeah, well, they still talk radio. exist. They just don't, <laughs> they don't exist. They just pretending <laughs> there's <laughs> a website. Uh, we're going to get approached at another conference now. Now Andy, Andy's <laughs> gone. There Go was a very, it. very weird moment in my life when approach me. The CEO of blog talk grabbed me in a bar. I was like, who are you? And what are you doing? Grabbed you to say hey, hi or grab hey, you. It was a metaphor for stepping in front of me and stopping me, but he might as oh. well have grabbed me. Yes. It yeah. happened to Dave. Dave, it happened to you too. We, it was, oh, I don't know what podcast my, movement. It was the first my, one or something. <laughs> it was in. Why are yeah, you talking bad in, about my stuff? He didn't say that at all. Yeah, Andy it was, was in great. Dallas. My favorite thing is, is he walks over and he goes, Hey, are you Dave Jackson? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, Oh, good. Because I'm, I'm Andy from blog talk radio. And I was like, yeah, when he introduced yeah, me, like, when he introduced like, himself from blog talk, I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What part do I cover? Is he going to kick yeah, me or like, oh. punch me? Why and, did you uh, do anything? It's the truth hurts. Oh, yeah. No, the, 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 and Steve, Steve Stewart grabbed a phone and starts videotaping it. it all, the awesome. kudos, all the kudos to Andy because A, for showing up there, B, for yeah. saying, no, please tell me more. And yeah. they tried to fix it. And they I'm did. not sure what happened, but they tried. The last I heard, they were battling physics. Because they had a really, I was a beta tester. They had a really cool thing where you could call into their phone via VoIP. So it didn't sound like a phone anymore. And they just could not get it to work 100% of the time. This is the HD system? Yeah. That's what was, HD was. Didn't work. It was pretty slick. They just couldn't get it to work. You know, you, you can't say, well, only one out of a thousand, you know, we lose the interviewer. And I'm just pulling that number completely out of my butt. But you can't lose anybody's interview. So they could not, from what I understand, and that's, I have no inside information, but I, he just said they were battling physics in a, uh, a slightly drunken stupor one evening when he was like, can you please quit <laughs> kicking my company, man? I'm like, Stop beating us up. Yeah. All right. Hey, well, we managed to actually get Jamie's other story in started with. We because the other one was a Spotify one, but you uh increased focus on podcasts. Yeah. So kudos. Um, we have a little more time. Dave, what did you put up here? Uh, we don't care. Dave. Well, this is one that I just <laughs> no, it I was, was gonna one... ask Jessica what she wanted to talk about. Oh. I don't but go ahead, tell us. It it's yeah. one little thing. Um, it's on uh, James Cridlin's site about how anchor is saying they are you know they brought so much advertising dollars into the space of which i still like to point out that i have a test show on anchor and my sponsor is anchor so what you think is money coming <laughs> into them is money going out but um james pointed out james cridlin over at podnews.net said that 93 percent of anchor shows are already pod faded and to me I was like, man, we're all talking about discoverability and there's so many shows and you can't find anything. And I'm like, well, I know a company that's like littering the highways of podcasting right now with dead <laughs> shows. And I was just like, I don't think anybody thinks about that. Um, and just the fact that, that a, when you sign up over there and you let them submit your show everywhere, you not only can you not look at podcast connect stats, I totally forgot. You can't look at your stitcher stats either. Here's but that so was if podcasting were a city, Anchor would be the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that was my only point. I just I didn't realize that they were that ninety three percent of the shows over there are pod fading. I was like, well, there's no skin in the game. So well, it brings up a super interesting question to me. Like, we kind of always said, oh, podcasting is too hard. Um, and a lot of times mm. we we reference that from the listener side. It's too hard to listen to a podcast. That's one of the barriers. Once it's in cars, we're all going to be rich. Blah blah blah. Right. Not true. 
but also from the production side. And I've always said that I enjoy that pod starting a podcast is not necessarily super easy because it weeds out some of stuff that would just be bad or didn't have any effort. So it's not necessarily bad that anchor created a platform that makes it super easy for anyone to podcast. I mean, so all those people, those 93% of shows, if that's right, it seems awfully high, but all those people at some point decided I want to try this and they tried it and they're like, I'm out of here. Right. Cause guess what? It's hard. It's hard to stick around. It's hard to stick around doing anything. I mean, like just try, even if you're just like a Instagrammer and like you post one picture, like, every other day that's hard like anything consistently is hard so that's what they are finding out about podcasting it's not starting that's hard it's staying there so but this is a problem right so now apple podcast is just littered as you mentioned the littered the highway with dead podcast and and probably just a lot of really bad content so you know this was clearly not i it feels like this shows us that making it easy to create a podcast is not an it's not a answer or it's not a, a good idea or i don't know i mean what do we think of that i mean that's what that's what i'm seeing like make it easy lots of people will try and they'll leave but now we you know those feeds are alive because anchor's free unless anchor goes down apple's not going to get rid of those feeds yeah you know i mean i think uh, to to use an analogy from the music world there are hundreds of thousands of pawn shops littered with guitars of people that bought a guitar saying, I'm going to learn to play guitar, right? Um, it, it's this isn't easy. Staying with anything is not easy. Um, I, you know, some of the hosts even have, you know, an app for your phone where you can literally podcast into your stinking smartphone, you know, hit a button say some words, hit another button and it publishes to your feed. I mean, why would you do that? That's my question. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, do I need to podcast from, you know, the basketball game that I go to this weekend? Probably not. Um, you know, I think making podcasting easier for people to get into it is a good idea. We, we need more good content, but if you, if your show is only going to last two weeks, there has to be some mechanism, a universal mechanism, in my opinion, that gets rid of those dead feeds. What if those were like those two weeks were just super amazing content that I actually, that people want to listen to. I mean, that's why shows still do yeah. good. People complain all the time. Oh, that podcast hasn't published an episode in five years, but it ranks above my podcast. Yeah. Cause people still like that content. Like it's not bad content. They're just done with it. So what do you yeah. do about that? Like, how do you, how do you draw the line? It's tough. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know who becomes the content police, but you know, it, it's it, it is a, a a very good point that the world is littered with dead shows that maybe isn't such great content. So Mark wrote a whole my boss slash friend Mark Asquith wrote a whole article about why Anchor isn't the villain in the podcasting story, and his point is that first of all, they're because they've made it so easy for anyone to podcast, they're they're really primed for being bought by someone like Apple or Spotify. Um, the other part is that, you know, as much as it irritates us, like it sort of pushes us to think about how to do our products better. How can we make it easier for people without having the litter problem? I agree. The, yeah. it's, it's one of those things where we went, hmm, okay, maybe we could do this a little easier. So. Well, I mean, even so what it's, uh, yeah, but, but delete what's older than three months without, I mean, how old does how, it have to be? Because Elsie's show hasn't been updated right. at like five years the yoga cool. Yeah. Five years. And, and she gets 500 a day. What, what are you going to do? Like, how do you, how do you, yeah. Cause there, there are shows out there like S town. There's a show that hasn't put out a, a, an episode in probably a year. I'm not sure when that show. So maybe if it hasn't had a listener in three months, you get rid of it. Not content. Yeah, Ooh, I, was thinking, I, was starting to lean, I was starting to lean that way too. Like yeah. sub 100 listens. Are like, it, it's just going to be a painful email to get. Hey, no one's listening. Peace cares. out. <laughs> right. For, a painful or, to hear, but. or add something new to the feed. Like, I don't, that doesn't seem like that's a thing. I don't. <laughs> it's going to be tough, but I think it's. Dear podcaster, you nobody suck. Loves you. <laughs> <laughs> you suck. You suck. Uh, that would be that would be a hard email to get. 
you know, I mean, maybe it's more, maybe more of the responsibility lies on the, um, on the host where they're, they should have some Deleted. type of interaction with their user where it says, Hey, we noticed you're not posting. Do you still want to keep this? If yeah. you just ask yeah. people if they want to pull it off, I bet you could clean half of it. People are like, yeah, I don't want that. Pull it off. Go ahead and delete I it. I think ego would make them keep it up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would, it's but I think you'd, you'd still it's my see, art, man. You'd, 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 I'm come back to it any minute. <laughs> you'd still solve. You'd still get some of it. Yeah. Come on, that's a good solution. Not I don't know. complete. No, it is. I like that. They should. Because I was yeah. going to say, well, they clean could. Clean up your ass stuff. I was yeah. going to swear, but then I have to put explicit on it. Well, here's the thing. With, with a, quote, normal uh, media host, be it Podbean, Blueberry, podcast websites, Libsyn, when you don't pay your bill, your feed <laughs> goes invalid. Right. It goes yeah. away. Yeah. Right. There's but when you're. It's going to just lay there. It's going to stay there forever unless you're Zcast. Don't worry, Frank. Anchor's not going to survive. I mean, this is their third iteration of being something. They used to be cool. I used to love it. It was the best best app I didn't use. I mean, it was absolutely my favorite <laughs> when you could talk to your audience and hear their voice back. It was incredible. Um, they found something with podcasts, which is interesting. I mean, they pivoted the podcast and you think, nah, whatever. They definitely found something. And people, there's plenty of articles about how they're pushing the space. And I don't think they're necessarily bad. They had some bad, they had a bad start. Um, some of their practices were not good. But, you know, it's an interesting question. Like, yeah. is making things easier good or bad? And you have both sides of it. So, well, I think it's the old adage, you know, the, and I say it on my show all the time. The good news is anybody can make a record or a podcast. The bad news is anybody can make a record or a podcast, right? And that's I the mean, beauty. It's, I, yeah, it's open and anyone can do I mean, I love that. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, that part's cool. But, you know, it's like there's a the public parks are open, but people still throw their gum wrappers all over the place. That's really the point. Well, it's nice to have public parks, but don't pee in there. That's all we're saying. Yeah, and open the government so I can clean that garbage up, please. <laughs> That's not a political show. But, all right. Well, <laughs> I think we carried ourselves to an hour. Good job, everyone. It was fun. Applause. Good. Maybe you'll come back. Thank you. I, I know to reach you. I know to find you. Let's see if you regret this later, and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> the chat seems you're popular in the chat, so you have to come back. Am I? Awesome. Thanks, I guys. Know. I saw some people stoked to see you. So. I think people get to elsie frankly they are you like they just make you the same person no they you come like up to me and Elsie? say i'm You're such a big she podcast i love elsie can we just <laughs> can, can i call you jelsey can i, I just want to do the mashup like, like you're a couple <laughs> thing. we're like laurel and hardy have you ever noticed <laughs> Jelsey or, a hippo uh, oh my god Elsica? she's the giraffe she's a giraffe Elsica. yeah Elsica. She's the giraffe and I'm the hippo. No, people come up to me all the time and they're like, I'm such a big fan of She Podcast. I love Elsie so much. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I just I just edit the show. I was Whatever. like, yeah, she's pretty awesome. She You're rocks. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love her too, but I mean, it's just funny. It they go funny. out of their way to tell me. Anyway, yeah, it's so, been really fun. Thank you so much for having me. Where where can we find your podcast? Me? Yeah. Um, ShePodcast.com is probably the best place. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Dave. Uh, you know, when people meet me, they just ask where Dave is. So Dave Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Hall of Famer. I mean, I get I it. I love Dave Jackson. <laughs> you, can, love you can find me over at uh, schoolofpodcasting.com the last time I checked. Still there. Last time I emailed myself, I actually asked where Dave Jackson was. I said, oh, <laughs> I miss you, Dave. <laughs> All right. It's only once every two weeks. We got to take this show once a week, man. Why not? No, come on. I don't want to do too much work. Hey, Jamie, thanks for joining us for your first roundtable. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'd love to come back if you guys will have me, if I didn't, you know, soil the place up too bad. Yep. That's Bring out those drums. Bring out Absolutely. those drums. Yeah. I think I might have some sticks over here, nice. actually. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get the band back together. Let's say. Yeah, Everyone's got to be. Uh, awesome. Dave, bring your guitar. Jess is going to bring the piano. We're going to rock this thing. I can't wait. We're actually yeah. going to, ooh, we're going to be so big on Spotify. I'm so stoked. <laughs> we're going to rock this town. All right. Turn it inside out. Wait, are we going to get content ID'd for that? Isn't this thing? <laughs> oh. Do we, do we owe somebody money now? Now we got to pay. All right. Thanks are the Stray Cats still around? I don't know if they are. <laughs> Stray Cats, uh, you know, it's funny because, anyways, I thought Stray Cats is just another word for a queen. I thought it's like the same band. There's is a queen true? song. No, no. <laughs> I just, it was a song I always thought was Stray Cats. Turns out I saw the Queen movie, it was Queen, so. Which one? I'm curious now. Oh, Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Probably. Yeah, Crazy Little Thing. How is that not yeah. a Stray Cat song? No, that's not it. Yeah. That is it. 
Yeah, come on. Yeah, I could see Queen that. So amazing. They made themselves into all kinds of different bands. All right. Yeah, this that's is why they're the awesome. Zach moment where we know to leave. <laughs> we will see you next time. Podcastersroundtable.com slash guest. If you are still listening, you are the type to go to that URL. Sign up. We'll get you on a round table. And we'll just, we'll talk. We'll, I'll make you submit stories and we won't talk about them and we'll have the best time. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to seeing you. All right. Wave goodbye. We are out of here. Oh, no. Don't hang up. I just yelled. I just peaked all my audio. Hold on. So Google's let me continue broadcast. Are you still here? I love it. That's fun. Bye.